everybody. I'm your host, Kelly Sparks. Hey, hey Redbeard. Back again with my friend, my good friend, Sherman. Uh, and in honor of the Bottled and Bond Act, which, as you're watching this today, uh, March 3rd, 1897, the Bottled and Bond Act was uh, passed. Do you know anything about that? I don't. I'm sure you're fixing to tell me that. Well, I'll tell you a little bit. <laughs> um, you want me to open it? You want yes, to... you can open it. Okay. So today we're actually going to drink, this is uh, Sherman's bottle. Most of these, pretty much I think everything we'll ever review at Sherman's house is going to be his whiskey. Uh, so basically, long story short, or it might be a long story long, I don't know. Uh, the Bottle and Bond Act came about because uh, this guy right here, this old white gentleman, uh, that's, that's Colonel E.H. Taylor. That's the guy. Mm -hmm. Well, basically, back in the day, um, people were selling rock gut whiskey. Mm -hmm. And the term rock gut came because it was literally making people sick and dying from it. So, to set some type of, it's good for, so to set some type of standard that people uh, could put their faith in and put their trust in, mm -hmm. Him, that guy, and the U.S. government came up with the Bottled and Bond Act. So, whenever in, in that era, uh, if you didn't see a bottle that had all of this stuff on it, Bottled and Bond, if it wasn't 100 proof, it has to tell you where it's distilled, where it's made, who the distiller was, what distilling season, all of that information is supposed to be on the bottle. So it kind of added a little bit of validity to what you were buying. Mm. So a lot of people in that era, a lot of the, uh, what's the word, the underhanded fellows uh, were taking barrels, taking it to customers, supermarkets, whatever, not supermarkets, <laughs> super Walmart. <laughs> they were taking it to the markets and they were giving people, they were letting people taste it. Oh. They're like, oh, that's a good barrel. I'd like that barrel. So they'll go back. Instead of them giving them that barrel, they'll give them some other trash barrel, uh, put a bunch of like kerosene, stuff mm -hmm. like that, making people sick, killing people. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's that's basically why the Bottled and Bond Act came about. Okay. Now there's, there's rules and regulations bound about it, but long story short, again, short story, long story <laughs> long, uh, it has to be aged at least four years. It has to be aged in a federally bonded warehouse. It has to be a hundred proof, and that's that's pretty much the high points. But, so I don't but, mean to cut you off, but don't lie. the <laughs> the uh, the age statement has to be at least four years for it to be bottled and bond yes. or. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Minimum four years. Now these, this one, this one doesn't have an age statement on it, mm -hmm. but more than likely it's between six and eight years old. Uh, I don't think it even says it. So once it gets over four years, they don't have to put an age statement on it. Okay. But once you get up closer to the double digit years, mm -hmm. they add the age statement back to it just okay. so that they can mark the bottles out. Because uh, okay. like. Uh, Old Fitzgerald bottled and bond. Mm -hmm. You got nine year, ten year, or nine year, eleven, thirteen year, and they got a fourteen year and a fifteen year. Mm -hmm. So, once uh, the older the bottle or the older the barrel gets, mm -hmm. the more often they put that age statement back on it, uh, just so they can kind of push that price up a little bit. Okay. I don't know, man. Tell me what you think. Let's get the nose so, on it. So you you know do you know anything about rye whiskey? Like, have, what other rye whiskeys have you had? I see a few over there. You got yeah. the Old Forester Rye. Old yeah. Forester Rye. Jack um, Daniel Single Barrel Rye. Got the Wild Turkey Rye. Um, wild Turkey uh, Cornerstone Rye. Oh, we had that one. Uh, we that one. The Willet Rye. Yeah. Uh, I had the ones I've had is basically the Wild Turkey and the uh, Old Forester uh, 100, 100 Proof Rye. Wow. Are really the only two I've just really dibbled and dabbled with in the uh, Sazerac. Gotcha. Sazerac's probably between that, that the Wild Turkey 101 rye and the uh, Old Forester rye are probably my three favorite 
I believe bias. I believe uh, this and the Sazerac are the same bash build. Really? I believe so. Okay. I'm not 100% on that one, but they do both come from the same distillery, mm -hmm. and I don't I don't believe that they have multiple mash bills regarding rye whiskey. Okay. So, it's spicy. It does smell a little spicy. Spicy on the palate. Mm-hmm. But I don't. It doesn't. Get, you don't get a lot of burn going down either. It's, it's, it's delicious. Really, it's really smooth going down. Yeah. Yeah. But it is spicy. Yeah, it's spicy in Initially. the mouth, but it kind of fades pretty quick as far as after whenever you swallow it. It had a sweet kick to it. Like, uh, I don't know how to explain it. When I put it on the tongue, and when it, when it took my tongue over, it had a sweetness mm -hmm, to it. Mm -hmm. it. It's not like some of those other ryes are kind of bland with, yep. the, with the heat. But this one has something else going on with a little sweetness. I want to say it. it's some kind of like a fruity sweetness. Yeah. Maybe like a almost like a stone fruit. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking apricots. That that one. But I don't remember the last time I had an apricot. Yeah, it's been a while. Like that's the that's the word that came in my head. But I took a pretty big gulp on that first one. Oh, that's <laughs> all right, man. We we ain't got to do it. We don't have to do a, a super long video, and I mean, by all means, it's your bottle if you want another pour. I don't want to overdo it. Yeah, we're gonna do a couple of these. Yeah, so. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna stop right there, but that's pretty good. That's not bad, isn't it? Mm -mm. So, know a little bit more information now about the bottle of the Bond Act. So, every time you see a bottle on the shelf that says bottle of the Bond, and I, I've seen you've got a few over here, mm -hmm. you kind of know what goes into that. There's more, this is actually the most highly regulated whiskey on the shelf in any record store. Okay. Whenever it says, uh, bottled and bought. Okay. So we've got our U.S. government has more regulations on whiskey than pretty much any other community that makes whiskey. Right. Scotland has some regulations. There, it has to be obviously produced in Scotland. Mm -hmm. It's got to be aged minimum for three years. So here in America, you can have bourbons that are aged for six months. Uh, be wary of those. Yeah. But uh, as far as knowing what uh, master distiller, what distillery, what distilling, it had to be, it has to be made by, that's it, it has to be made by one distiller in one distilling season at like the same distillery. Uh, so if, if you have, uh, let's say, God forbid, somebody dies in the middle of that distilling season, then those whiskeys, they couldn't be put in their, their bottle and bond house. Really? So, if, if, I mean, if some tragedy happens mm -hmm. and a distiller changes place or gets replaced, if, if he retires. Okay. I mean, I, I had to take it to the limit. Yeah. <laughs> somebody dies. <laughs> well, people retire all the time. So if somebody retired during the distilling season, then those barrels, whatever, whatever part of the process they were in, they couldn't be used as bottle and bond. Okay. So, That's you know, interesting. A little more information about it. Yeah. So, I, truth be told, the bottle and bond, that I just thought it was another fancy word for them to put on the bottle to make you want to get it, to make, it was just that much more exclusive, and, but I didn't really know the history behind it, but. Uh, it kind of makes it a little more exclusive, but there's still 12 to $15 bottles that say bottle and bond on the shelf in mm -hmm. the liquor store. Okay. Not like a $65, $70 bottle. Okay. So. You can still find cheap stuff that says bottle and bond. Mm -hmm. like for instance, uh, Evan Williams, bottle yeah. and bond, $15. Mm -hmm. uh, Mellow Corn, bottle and bond, it's corn whiskey. It's like 14, 13, 14 bucks. Mm -hmm. But yeah, well, I think that's it. That's it. Sherman was like, I'm done with this one. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. This one was good. Uh, it's pretty spicy to me. It was yeah. probably more spicy to me than it was to you. But well, there I was never, a I definitely kick. got the spice. I I like it though. It's it's a different rye than those others. You could use these for your uh, old fashions. Ooh, they're probably, probably going to be pretty, pretty good. good. I will try that. <laughs> all right. Well, that's all we got on this one. Uh, don't forget, check the description below for all the links to help out with the bills and whatnot. Like and subscribe. Like always. 
Uh, check out the Bearded Idiots. And uh, like I say uh, every time, man, drink some whiskey, share it with your friends and family. Be safe. Don't drink and drive. We'll see you next time.